Chapter 4, One of Us is Lying. Addie, Thursday, September 27th, 7.30 p.m. I should be doing homework before Jake stops by, but instead I'm sitting in a vanity in my bedroom, pressing fingers to the skin at my hairline. The tenderness on my left temple feels as though it's going to turn into one of those horrible oversized pimples I get every few months or so. Whenever I have one, I know that's all anyone can see. I'll have to wear my hair down for a while, which is how Jake likes it anyway. My hair is the only thing I feel 100% confident about all the time. I was at Glenn's dinner last week with my girlfriend sitting next to Keely across from my big mirror, and she reached over and ran a hand through my hair while grinning at our reflections. Can we please trade just for a week, she said. I smiled at her, but I wish we were sitting on the other side of the table. I hate seeing Keely and me side by side. She's so beautiful, all tawny skin and long eyelashes and general Angelina Jolie lips. She's a lead character in a movie and I'm a generic best friend whose name you forget before the credits even start rolling. The doorbell rings, but I know better than to expect Jake upstairs right away. My mom's going to capture him for the last, for at least 10 minutes. She can hear enough about Simon's situation and she talked about the Today's meeting with the Officer Budapest All Might if I let her. I separate my hair into sections and I run a brush along each length. My, mi my mind keeps going back to Simon. He had been constant presence around our gossip since freshman year, but he was never one of us. He had only one real friend, a sort of goth girl named Janae. He used to think all we were together until Simon started asking out all my friends. Of course, none of them ever said yes. Although last year, before she started dating Cooper, Keely got super drunk at a party and let Simon kiss her for five minutes in the closet. It took her ages to shake him after that. I'm not sure what Simon was thinking, to be honest. Keely has one type, Jock. She should have gone for someone like Bralwyn. She's cute enough and quite in the quiet kind in a quiet kind of way with interesting gray eyes and hair that would probably look great when if she were it, if she ever wore it down plus she and simon must have tripped over each other in honors classes all the time except i got the impression today that Bronwyn didn't like simon much or at all when officer budapest talked about how simon died Bronwyn looked i don't know not sad i knocked a knock sound at the door which i opened in a mirror i kept brushing my hair as Jake comes in, he pulls off his sneakers and flops on the bed with exaggerated exhaustion, arms splayed at his sides. Your mom's wrung me dry, Ads. I've never met anyone who can ask the same question so many ways. Tell me about it, I say getting up to join him. He puts an arm around me and curl to his side, my head on his shoulder and my hand on his chest. We know exactly how to fit together. I relax for the first time since I got called into Principal Gupta's office. I trail my fingers along his bicep. Jake's not as defined as Cooper, who's practically a superhero with all the professional level working out he does. But to me, he's perfect balance of muscular and lean. And he's fast. The best running back Bayview High has seen in years. There's not the same feeding frenzy around him as Cooper. But a few colleges are interested and he's got a good shot at a scholarship. Mrs. Keller called me, Jake said. My hands halt up its progress in his arms and I stare at him. His, I stare at the crisp blue cotton of his t-shirt. Simon's mother? Why? She asked if I'd be a pallbearer at the funeral. He's going. It's going to be Sunday, Jake says, so the shoulders lifting in a shrug. I told her, sure, I can't really say no, can I? Just forget sometimes that Simon and Jake used to be friends in grade school and middle school before Jake turned into a jock and Simon turned into a whatever he was. Freshman year, Jake made varsity football team and started hanging out with Cooper, who was already a, a Bayview legend after almost pitching his middle school team into the League World Series. My sophomore year, the two of them were basically the kings of our class, and Simon was just some weird guy Jake used to know. I half think Simon started to think about that to impress Jake. Simon found one, found out about one of Jake's football ri rivals was behind the anonymous sexting harassment of a bunch of junior girls and posted it on the app called After School. It got tons of attention for a, last, for a couple of weeks, and so did Simon. That may have been the first time anyone at Bayview noticed him. 
Jake probably patted him on the back once and forgot about it. And Simon moved on to bigger and better things by building his own app. Gossip is... Gossip as a public service doesn't go very far, so Simon started posting things a lot pettier and a lot more personal than the sexting scandal. Nobody thought it was a hero. He was a hero anymore. But then they were getting scared of him, and I guess for Simon that was almost as good. Jake used to yeah, yeah, usually defended you. Simon, though. When our friends got down on him for about that, it's not like he's lying. He'd point out, stop doing sneaky shit and it won't be a problem. Jake can be pretty black, wh white. Jack, Jake can be pretty black and white in his thinking sometimes. Easy when you never make a mistake. We're all heading to the beach tomorrow night, if that's okay. He tells me now, winding my hair around his finger. He says it's like it's up to me, but we both know Jake's in charge of our social life. Of course, I remember who's going. Don't say TJ. Cooper and Keely were supposed to, although I'm not sure if he's up for it. Luis and Olivia, Vanessa, Tyler, Noah, Sarah, don't say TJ, and TJ. Ugh, I'm not sure if my imagination or if TJ, who used to be on the outskirts of our group as the new kid, he started working his way into the center right when I wish he'd disappear altogether. Great, I say blatantly, reaching up and kissing Jake's jawline. It's time of the day when a little scratchy which is new this year. Adelaide, my mother's voice, floats up the stairs. We're heading out. She and Justin go somewhere downtown almost every night, usually restaurants, but sometimes clubs. Justin's only 30 and still into that whole scene. My mother enjoys it just almost as much, especially when people mistake her for being Justin's age. Okay, I call, and the door slams. After a minute, Jake leaks down to kiss me, his hand sliding under my shirt. A lot of people think Jake and I had been sleeping together since freshman year, and that's not true. He wanted to wait until after junior prom. It was a big deal. Jake rented a fancy hotel room and filled it with candles, flowers, and brought me amazing, and bought me amazing lingerie from Victoria's Secret. I wouldn't have minded something a little more spontaneous, I guess, but I know I'm beyond lucky to have a boyfriend who cares enough to plan every last detail. Is this okay? Jake's eyes scan my face. Or would you rather just hang out? His, bri his brows rise like it's a real question, but his hand keeps inching lo lower. I never turn Jake down. It's like my mother said when she first took me to get birth control. If you say no too much, pretty soon someone else will say yes. Anyway, I want it just as much as he does. I live for these moments of closeness with Jake. I'd crawl inside of him if I could. Oh, more than okay, I say, and pull him on top of me.